Good morning, everyone. It is Juneteenth, and we are on day two of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover here in the Venetian. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst, co-founder of theCUBE, Dave Vellante. We're still basking in the glory of the Celtics championship win, but today we're talking football. We are, but we're still humble. We are. <laughs> well, maybe. Uh, I'd like to welcome our next two guests to the show. We have Brian Thompson, VP Product Management, HPE GreenLake Cloud Services at HPE. Welcome back to theCUBE. Yeah, Cube. thank you. Good morning. And Matt Masek, he is the CIO of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome, Matt. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So as, as I said, we're, we're going we're gonna to talk football, so let's hear Let's hear from you. Talk, talk, talk through to our viewers, what are some of the challenges that you're facing in terms of how you think about supporting your diverse group of businesses in terms of technology? I mean, listen, it's all about uh, being nimble, right? And being able to react and move fast. Um, Yes, you hear the Dallas Cowboys, the big brand, the global brand, right? But what you America's don't know. America's team. Yeah, America's team. But what you don't know is all of the other businesses. I mean, Jerry Jones, he is an entrepreneur, right? He has ideas. And, and on the technology side, you just have to make it happen, right? And, and so whenever you just have to position yourself, it's very difficult to look forward, right? It's very, look forward to three years when when an idea can just come out of nowhere that you have not planned for and you have to react and, and there is no, well maybe we can get it done, you have to get it done. And your scope is pretty wide, it's not just the football team, right? Is that correct? Or, 100 percent So could you, can you explain the businesses that you know, Jerry Jones oversees? So there's, it fluctuates because there's new and then they're sold, and, and, but we, we, we throw out the 150 entities, businesses. Now, all of those don't require intense technology support, but we have, we have a wide variety. So medical imaging is a huge one. We have multiple facilities all around the state of Texas, multiple radiologists doing scans and you know, uh, studies on MRIs and CAT scans and all of that. We have retail, we have construction, uh, we have co-working spaces, uh, let's see, when I say construction, we're building warehouses, we're f almost like flipping warehouses, stand them up, and, and you know, in the North Texas, you, you can't build them fast enough, right? And so, it goes on from there. I mean, we have eSports, um, it's, it's so much fun, like merchandising, you hear, you hear, you know, all right, Cowboys branded stuff, right? So. We manufacture wholesale distribute. If it has a cowboy star on, comes from us. No other sports teams manufacture. Nobody's doing anything like that. And then we pivoted that into a different business of just apparel, uniforms, swag. You know, like uh, you know, HP polos. You know, you could have if we were if if HP was one of our customers, <laughs> we could definitely do that for you. But all of that, all of that information, all that, all the gear, we can do that also. So there's. When, I, when you hear about ideas, it's like, hey, we're already doing all this merchandising for the Cowboys brand. We've already got it in place. Why don't we pivot that and form a completely different business? And I want to get into the Green Lake aspects here, but this is fascinating, because you think of the business of sports, you think, okay, NFL, it's a lot of, it's a lot of TV, you know, Major League Baseball, it's more the gate, but now you're talking about all these other, other businesses that you can form. Let me ask you a question. The, the vertical integration and the manufacturing, is that a, is that a, uh, a margin motivation? Is it a quality? Is it the brand? Is it all of those? 100%, uh, it's all of it. And, and, and the thing was, is when Jerry bought the team, not, nothing like that was happening. And it did come into the revenue aspect of it. And it's like, why, why would I let somebody else control my fate when I can do that myself? And so he, he was a pioneer and Right, I mean it was a couple years after he bought the team, he went after it really hard and took all of that merchandising aspect in-house, and then you can control it. And it's... Jerry Jones is great for the sport of football. You guys got to win one again, because then the haters will come out and it'll be even more fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you, notice, you know what I mean? You notice it's, I don't have a ring on today. Just, <laughs> <laughs> because I can got, promise you, I would have it on. You got we some. <laughs> but I'm really curious to hear how you're, you're talking about Jerry Jones, and he's obviously a legendary leader. Um, but just what does it mean to have someone who is, Jerry says something, we got to get it done. We have to go bend the laws of physics and get his, execute his vision. What is it, from both of you, to have that kind of leader, that kind of visionary, who is really setting the agenda and making sure teams are firing on all cylinders. I mean, not all organizations have that kind of, but, but what, what, what is it like working for someone like that? Well, it, look, it, it's never boring, you know? <laughs> and people ask me that all the time, and it's like, there are, there are no boring days, 
you know there might be i might get a week out of the year you know where when they're on vacation or something like that but yeah it, it's very exciting i mean it's, it's challenging because hey there is no time for complacency there isn't you know and i mean even look at and i'm not you know not speaking for HPE, but like Antonio and like yesterday and everything that came out in the keynote and like having that type of visionary leader that's thinking so far down the path. I mean, me as a customer being excited for all the news and everything that's, that's come out. And I still, I know I haven't heard everything. I mean, it's well, and Brian. Uh, still coming I, we, more. We've talked to Antonio about this. Is he, you know, he had to bang some heads to make sure yeah. everybody's playing playing ball with GreenLake. Yeah. And then that's become an advantage for you guys because the message here is very clear. It's an integrated strategy. It's yeah. not a, a bunch of stovepipe widgets. It's like yeah. we're selling solutions for this AI era. I wonder if you could talk. To, yeah. To that I think that's issue. part of the key, and it actually goes back to something that Matt mentioned. Right? Is in his space, the diversity of different things that he has to try to serve, it's all about being nimble. That's really where GreenLake has continued to evolve and how do we bring together the GreenLake cloud as now a not a siloed set of offerings from HPE, but a very thoughtful, how do I bring a portfolio, leveraging things that are hybrid in nature, provide interoperability, right? Think about like monitoring observability. Now we're bringing together the, the AI announcement we made yesterday with our private cloud AI solution. That is really a full pan HPE solution where we brought together all the different kind of components from our teams and how we bring together that full turnkey engineered stack partnered closely with NVIDIA to co-engineer that. It's a great example of bringing that together to really deliver that experience uh, and provide that nimble and agility that, that customers are looking for. So I'm interested in how you're using, uh, the, the taking advantage of this capability today, but please, you have Well, to, yeah, uh, I mean, look, it's, ex and, and we, we've talked about this as, as far as all of us that were here several years ago in GreenLake, that's, that's all it was talked about at Discover, GreenLake, GreenLake, and you hear the vision, and you hear the vision, and that's what I felt today, or yesterday, is like, the vision, it's all, it's all happening, and now it's just, let's plug more things into the platform. Let's just plug, hey, we've got, you know, this private AI, let's, boom, you're just dropping it into the platform and making it easy to operate. And that, going back three years ago when, when it was just GreenLake, GreenLake, you, you couldn't grab the full picture. You knew it was the future, and then now watching it actually unfold, it's been, it's been fun for a customer. Uh, and I mentioned that we first had the Cowboys on in 2010, when the, the Cube's first year, and you were doing some pretty advanced things back then in analytics with, you know, what, with the state of infrastructure back yeah. then. As I recall, you were doing some really interesting things with, with supply and demand and you know, end of season and inventory and, and pricing on, on, on merchandise. Oh, Romo had a good game, so. Oh, absolutely. You know, right? So, what's the state of that analytics today and where does GreenLake fit? I mean, it, it's definitely accelerating. Um, and that's, that's one of the great things, uh, just about a month ago, we just had a great AI workshop HPE led, um, and we were actually targeting more of the football operations side. We brought in all of our analytics teams, and it was just, it was one of those conversations to where like, hey, let's, let's figure out what we can do. Here's all the data, like what is possible? And the funny thing is, is we were creating all of these plans and use cases of what exactly we're going to do, and now, now we know what the hardware is. Now we know exactly what it's going to run on, and that, but, that's the exciting thing is, is there's so much data, all your fan engagement, uh, I mean, yeah. all the data that we're sharing with the league that we're getting back, it's being able to act on all of that data, I mean, just everything that we've heard, obviously, the last couple of days, it's really exciting to be able to start taking these early conversations. And we've been a little, at least from stepping into the AI aspect of it, it's been a little, you know, cautious, you know, and that's, by design, I think a lot of people have. Yeah. And then now it's, now it's time, okay, we've got our idea, we've got our plan, let's start moving fast. Is, what's, can you paint a picture of your environment? Is it a hybrid environment? And what, what does that look like? I mean, it is, I would say it is a, it's a primarily, it is a, we have multiple data centers, stadium, our headquarters building, everything is Green Lake based. And so the majority of it is our hybrid cloud that we operate on the Green Lake platform. And, and you, so you're using public cloud as well? Or? Not as much. Okay. Some, not what do you as much. You use it for like a spillover, or like just yeah, search? I mean like in a, lot, in a lot of, yes, a little bit backup. of search. Yes, back, you know, backups and uh, a lot of our 360 Microsoft environment and things like that and some of our Azure. Why, two-part two question, why, why are you choosing to do 
the majority of your work on-prem, and, and, and how does that affect your AI strategy in terms of your data is obviously the on-prem. On well, I mean, we, we do, I mean, especially in the football aspect, we do a lot of video, a lot of big video. I mean, like video is everything to coaches, players. I mean, that's where you do your study and you're, you're studying the opponent picking your draft, your players, everything is video. Your homework in between games. And so when you have that much video, that's, you're, you're, gonna, you're living on-prem, right? Everything has to be fast, I mean, incredibly fast. And so that, so that and with all of the other data, and then still you, you get on the, 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 the football side of things, yeah, you know, they don't want to change very quickly, you know, they're a little old school, and so they're, they're still protective. They want to know where their data is living, and it's protected underneath our umbrella, you know, in our private cloud. And you'll be applying AI to that video, I can only imagine the types well, of things that's and exactly insights you're going to get out of that. That's and that's proprietary data, I mean, yes. that is hugely proprietary. And I don't want to, you know? I can't, I don't want to go too far down there, but that's exactly where we're at working with HP, of like, some of the different things that we can do with video, and some, uh, sensor data on the players and kind of merging some of this stuff. So that's where we're kind of going. And it's, it's early days. There's a lot of considerations yes. there. There's privacy stuff. There's, there's, there's making it work. <laughs> yep. So uh, not all of us are so under the hood with the, how, these, how these teams operate, but we're all fans. And so can you paint a picture of, a, of what the future looks like for fan engagement in terms of how teams are going to use analytics and, and, and make our experience more, more engaging and more fun? You know, it, it's, it is it is exciting, but like it, it, a lot of times it's venue based. If you if you walk into our stadium, this massive video board, we've got we've already got a lot of information, right? And it is that's what you know fans want, especially when you're sitting at home and you have all the data, you have all the analytics, you can pull. It. So that it's it's providing more information, you know. And look, it all starts to me. It starts with connectivity. You've got to be connected. Everybody has to be on all time in venue, and then now it's. It's everything else that we can overlay and just give them more, you know? I mean, that's, and that's the world we live in now is people just don't want to watch a game. They want to understand exactly what happened, what did happen, and, um, you know, and get into the weeds. Do you think wrong? You think, go ahead, sorry. No, just particularly because sports is one of the few shared ex communal experiences yeah, we now have in this yeah, sliced and diced media sure. environment. I, I think it's fascinating working with customers like Matt because now you think about They've been collecting, they have all these different ways to collect all this data, and now there's all these new potentials of how do you actually leverage that and provide value and new experiences or come up with things that wouldn't even thought of five years ago. Like we talk about the sensitivity of this data, like this becomes competitive, right? This becomes differentiating and the blue star experience that you can be providing based on, like it's just, it's exciting to see these different scenarios and use cases. It's competitive, but what about collaboration? I mean, NFL's owners, it's a club. It and, is. and they're expanding, they're going overseas. You see what's happening in basketball. I mean, so many great international yeah. players. And so, is, is there an aspect of collaboration that you're able to affect? 100%. You know, look, there's not going to be a collaboration on the secret sauce of yeah, your of scouting app and some of that different types of things. But like one of my peers is out here at Discover right now and we've, I mean, as we've been walking from place to place, just having great conversations. And the NFL, NFL does a great job of bringing all of the technology teams together to do that, to brainstorm, to share information. And it's a, it's a club and we, and, and not just the NFL, it's all sports. Uh, uh, the Tottenham Hotspurs, they're out here. And, and I got to know, you know them through HPE and Discover, um, you know, uh, the Golden State Warriors. Like we all, it, it is a, it's like community spread around the world. I got to talk to clubs from Australia, cricket clubs, all kinds of stuff, and we're just sharing. And we all, it, it's, it, look, it's fun and you want to raise the boat. You want to raise that experience across the globe because all the fans, it doesn't matter what sport, they're asking for it. You know, it's interesting, you're right, the demand is off the charts, and this, look at, there's only so many seats at the NFL table, or NBA, yep. or MLB. Yeah. That's why you see women's sports now exploding. I heard a stat the other day, it's not surprising, but, but the NCAA women's final had 2x the viewers of the, the game Clark five. Caitlin Clark effect, yeah. Right, yeah. And, yeah. and so, you know, and it's only so many billionaires they'll let in, and so they want to put their money elsewhere yeah. and, and grow these other sports. And you know, uh, uh, international sports, soccer's going through the roof. Yeah, of course, it always no. has been. It's uh, it's actually quite remarkable. Okay, Tony Romo, better QB or announcer, a game analyst? 
Yeah, I think he's a pretty good game analyst. I liked him as a QB too, but uh, you don't have to answer that. But it is fairly <laughs> polarizing. I mean, living in Dallas and <laughs> the radio station there will break down his you know call of the game. And yeah, look, it that question you're you're hard on one side yeah. or the other. It's funny, I mean, right? A lot of people don't lie. I love Tony Romo's analysis. Yes. He he sees things before they happen, and like, yep. wow, that's good. I learned things when I when I listened to him. So anyway, excellent. Well, <laughs> thank you both so much for coming on the Cube. A really fun conversation. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.